Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News, on iTunes One Word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, Janady Golovkin is really a historical figure. He's a moment in time right now, right? Understand the entire time I've watched boxing, I can only name two other times where you had a guy who had a big punch like this and people really worried about the health of the opponents facing him, right? The feeling is that Golovkin hits so much harder than anyone else that the guys in the ring with him, professional fighters who do this for a living, are somehow at risk. Understand, there have been other big punchers in the sport, but some really weren't well known enough in their prime to conjure up this kind of anticipation, right? Julian Jackson, Edwin Valero, they really weren't as popular, as known as Janady Golovkin is right now. Also, for some of the big punchers in history, they weren't on the world stage, right? Golovkin is doing this while he's middleweight champion. He's been middleweight champion so long that now they're throwing around names like Marvin Hagler in terms of the number of defenses he's had. Right? Understand, this is truly astonishing stuff. And unlike, let's say, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, who would chop you down in the ring, big puncher would wear out your rib cage, would be up on your chest. Golovkin is different. He's of the one punch variety. Right? You look at Golovkin fights and guys are getting hit in the ribs or, in the case of Marco Antonio Rubio, literally on the top of the head. And guys are going down. Right? It's not that Golovkin's throwing great combinations. It's that his punch is that heavy. Guys can't withstand it. The only two fighters who come to mind who've been in the public light with punches like this, reputations of other guys being on the clock from the opening bell, are from the early 70s, Big George Foreman, at least that I'm aware of, right? During my life, Big George Foreman and Iron Mike Tyson. Those are the only two guys I know of who were supposed to hit so hard that you thought that there were different dynamics taking place, right? As I said in an earlier video, you thought that Superman wore boxing gloves and was a fighter, right? I would say Foreman after he destroys Ken Norton, right? Right before the Ali fight, that George Foreman, and keep in mind, he had destroyed Joe Fraser, and... Iron Mike Tyson, after he destroys Marvis Fraser, right? A fight that was shocking for anyone who saw that fight, right? At that moment in their histories, you wondered whether any guy would be able to, you know, forget beat them. Just make it to the eighth round against them, right? That's the feeling right now with Janady Golovkin, right? He destroyed Marco Antonio Rubio. Let me say this, I understand. You know, I speak some Spanish. Uh, where I'm from, when someone says, you know, siete, ocho, that's seven, eight. I thought the count in boxing is supposed to be a 10 count. When a guy's getting up at eight, I thought the referee should have allowed that fight to continue. I'll agree. 
with those who feel that the stoppage was premature. But make no mistake, Rubio gets hit on the top of the head, he goes down, he's hurt. He clearly can't get up for the first five seconds. That's clear. Right? You know, he's he's been hit, he's been dropped. Also, let's be real. You know, Golovkin is coming inside, hasn't been touched. Right? In other words, I know there's a moment in this fight where you see the possibilities, right? Rubio hits him with a straight jab. That straight jab gets through. But let's just say no stiff punches landed on Golovkin for the short period of time in which this fight happened. Right? There's nothing that Rubio does that ever gets Golovkin on his back foot. Right? So it's a dominant performance by Golovkin. Let me just say, though, that as it was with Foreman, and with Tyson, right? It's an optical illusion here, right? Understand, when you research the Tyson history, you're going to notice that guys like Bone Crusher Smith were able to hug him for several rounds, right? Guys were able to go the distance with Mike Tyson before Buster Douglas chaos him right I mean it's just the way it is um, you look at Janady Golovkin and let me just say if you look at the Kasim Uma fight that's the Rosetta Stone here right Uma was a guy going into that fight who had lost five of seven matches when he fights Golovkin in mid-2011, you're going to notice that when Kasim Uma gets low and is throwing uppercuts to Golovkin's body, there is no defensive resistance. Right? Golovkin has holes in his defense. Let me point out a major bit of analysis from the British telecast of this fight. George Groves is actually in studio. Right? The super middleweight. Now Groves, during the telecast, when asked about Golovkin, actually points out that Golovkin is there to be hit with a jab. Now understand, the reason why that's significant is because George Groves sparred with Golovkin, right? Keep track of the sparring. George Groves sparred with Golovkin. Fans of Groves know he has a pretty good jab, right? Just, just understand, when Groves is saying that Golovkin is there to be hit with a jab, this is a guy who's been in the ring with him. Now, I've noticed other guys against Golovkin have bailed out of the pocket. Even guys with jabs. Daniel Gill's moving around the ring. No one wants to stay in the pocket with Janady Golovkin. But you know that a fighter who can stay in the pocket with Golovkin or who could, at a minimum, stop the movement. In other words, Golovkin's hunting him down have Golovkin walk into your shoulder, right? Look at Floyd Mayweather against Shane Mosley, right? A fighter who can draw a line in the sand and have Golovkin walk into his shoulder and who can then get low like Kasim Uma and start to work Golovkin's body, who can also throw the straighter punches than Golovkin. What I want people to do and looking at this Rubio tape, and it's not that long, is to count the number of straight punches thrown by Glovkin. You'll actually notice as you look at the film that Glovkin is throwing punches from weird angles. He's not a guy who throws straight punches. 
right? That opens up the possibility for a jabber like Groves, but he's going to have to be prepared to make a commitment and stay in the pocket, right? Or let's say a great counter puncher who can land crisp counters, who can stand his ground, and who could also get lower than Golovkin, right, as Uma did, and work his body, right? Frankly, I know it's heresy here. I think Floyd Mayweather beats Gennady Golovkin, right? Golovkin's a big puncher, but understand, I think the genius of Gennady Golovkin is in terms of his timing on how he stalks you. I've called him a cautious stalker. You're going to notice that he's not really in front of Rubio, but then suddenly there he is, right? He seems to wait for little gaps in the action, then he gets up on you. He's the kind of heavy-handed guy who can throw punches at weird angles and really hurt you. But understand, that's what clinching is for. Let me throw another name in the mix. I think Bernard Hopkins beats Janady Golovkin. Right? I think a guy who can clinch Golovkin, time Golovkin, go to his body, throw straight punches, can take him out of his game. Right? Understand these big punchers right might not have a plan B George Foreman was a mid-range hooker with a great jab right pretty rough combination what I want people to do is revisit the rumble in the jungle I know the popular thought is that Ali rope dopes Foreman and Foreman punches himself out but what I want you to do is to actually score the fight. You're actually going to notice that with his back up against the ropes before the knockout, Ali's winning several of those rounds. Right? He's hitting Foreman with counters as Foreman's coming inside. What I want people to do is to look at the Mike Tyson Buster Douglas fight. You're going to notice that it's not just Douglas's jab. Douglas is hitting Tyson on the way in with uppercuts. Right? If you're two front foot heavy, you're vulnerable to counters. Now with Janady Golovkin, let me just say this. He's not really trying to win rounds on the scorecard. He's there trying to knock you out. The punches are a little bit wide. As George Groves pointed out on the British telecast, his defense isn't all that. Now let me say something to the gamblers. The casino here, and I'm focusing on the Rubio side of the line, Right, People here online have pointed out that Janady Golovkin, on his side of the line, was something like a 100 to 1 favorite. I'm not kidding. At some casinos. right? It's foolish betting on Golovkin. Right? Even Golovkin by KO was a minus 1400. This was against a fighter who had gone the distance with Julio Cesar Chavez, Jr., who had beaten David Lemieux, right? The lines are so out of whack for Golovkin fights that they're pricing him for perfection. Understand, when you're getting 16 to 1 odds, and I know it didn't work out here, but if you hit on 16 to 1 odds in any of, let's say, 15 fights, you come out ahead. Right? Dare I say it, Golovkin, from a gambling perspective, is over value. He's now talking about lifting his game. And he wants to fight the toughest in boxing. Right? 
Andre Ward's already said he wants to fight Janady Golovkin. I don't think that fight happens because I think Golovkin understands Ward can smother him. In other words, as Golovkin comes forward and is throwing bombs, if he doesn't catch Andre, and if Andre holds his ground, Andre's going to be throwing withering punches to the body that, quite frankly, would slow down and, in my opinion, ultimately stop Golovkin. Look how troubled he is over 10 rounds against Kasim Uma. Understand the size gap. Right, Golovkin made weight at 160. Quite frankly, Golovkin isn't that big for a middleweight. He's not. Right, guys like Ward are actually super middleweights. A fight that would have been excellent, given that Uma was a southpaw, would have been a fight between Golovkin and Sergio Martinez, who's also a southpaw and who's mobile before Sergio's knee problems, right? Because obviously movement against Golovkin is paramount, right? Getting him to change his rhythm, confusing him on rhythm, as Martinez does by bouncing, would have been intriguing. Let me say this. A fight against Miguel Cotto, which Golovkin is talking about now, is also intriguing because Cotto shorter than Golovkin. Cotto can fight low. Cotto throws one of the sport's best left hooks to the body. The problem with Cotto is he's one-handed, right? His power hand is his jab hand. So that would give Golovkin a little bit more latitude than he would have, let's say, against an Andre Ward, right? My point to you, though, is this. Superman exists in the comic books, not in boxing. Every generation has a fighter come along who we all think is invincible, right? George Foreman was an Olympic gold medalist, right? He had run through some excellent fighters, right? Fraser, Norton, both of those guys blown out early. Both of those guys down multiple times. Right, Ken Norton tried to get off the canvas, didn't have his legs, literally was holding the ring ropes to get back on his feet against George Foreman. Right? What I want people to do is to look at the interview. It's one of the best in boxing history after the Foreman Norton fight. Howard Cosell interviews a guy who was ringside, Muhammad Ali. And he says to Ali, why do you think you can survive against George Foreman after this guy destroyed Joe Fraser and Ken Norton? And Ali literally on film gives you the blueprint. Right? He talks about, you know, jabs, and all that other stuff. All I'm saying to you is this. The same blueprint that would work against a George Foreman or a Mike Tyson hitting the guy on the way in is there for people who want to fight Janady Golovkin. He's not gifted defensively. He's more of an athlete and a puncher than he is a craftsman, right? I know I'm, <laughs> I know I'm in the minority here, right? This is as crazy as someone talking about Buster Douglas being a viable opponent against Mike Tyson before the fight takes place, right? But just understand, there are fighters out there, Miguel Cotto, for example, who would disrupt Golovkin's rhythm, be hard to find in the ring, and who would give Golovkin much less to hit because Cotto is smaller, can bend, and can move than opponents like Marco Antonio Rubio. Let me say this too. For those of you who remember the Rubio-Lemieux fight, in that fight, 
Rubio had problems early. Right? In that fight, he had problems early. They let that fight continue. Rubio then was able to make the adjustments. Once you figure out the Golovkin puzzle and have the time to make adjustments, things change. I want you to look at the count here. I'm sure the ref acted, you know, in good faith here. But look at the count, right? When the ref says, seis, siete, ocho, isn't Rubio getting off the canvas? Do you ever hear the ref say diez? Right? It would have been intriguing to have seen if Rubio could have recovered from the knockdown. Because Rubio is adaptive reactive. Right? This fight, who knows what would have happened if the ref would have let Rubio continue. I'm not saying Rubio was winning the fight. I'm not saying up until that point, Rubio was doing a lot of stuff where you thought, oh, oh, you know, he could win by knockout. Right? I'm not even saying Rubio wasn't badly hurt on the canvas. But this is boxing. Guys get knocked down. As I like to say, I once saw Nigel Ben get knocked out the ring. Get back in the ring. Jack Dempsey, get back in the ring and win a fight. Right? Here, Rubio should have had the opportunity here to continue at least past the first knockdown. Right? We haven't seen a vet other than Uma with time to actually make the adjustments against Golovkin. And as I've said, if you look at that Uma fight, look what happens when Uma is throwing shots to Golovkin's body. As you look at the film, do you feel comfortable with Golovkin's defense? Understand, too. Uma, by the time he faces Golovkin, is no longer Kasim Uma, right? He had lost five of his previous seven fights, right? If Golovkin is vulnerable to the body, aren't you looking at a situation that could end in a car crash, right? Foreman doesn't beat the count, at least according to the ref. I know it's debatable doesn't beat the count against Ali, right? Mike Tyson ends up on the canvas reaching for his mouthpiece with an eye that looked like a baseball, right? If a fighter has holes in his game and if he fights a prepared opponent, I'm telling you, we could go from the penthouse to the highlight reel in just a few punches. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And let me just say, the casinos are more than compensating you for the risk. You got 16 to 1 on Marco Antonio Rubio. Is there any fighter in any division at an elite level who you feel against a world-class contender World-class contenders, the public at large, in 17 fights is going to win 16 of them. When you see prices like this, you have to be a contrarian even when you're going to lose some fights on the way to the payday as you lost on this fight if you took Marco Antonio Rubio. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me also say, too, the uh, Golovkin by KO Hedge held. It always seems to hold. It's easy to bet on Golovkin fights because you understand his way of winning is by KO. He's not there to win a decision. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.